I recently came across this video. I'm going to test a strategy where if a stock went down 5% for the past week, I'm going to buy $5 of that stock. And if a different stock went up 10% last week, I'm going to sell $10 of that stock. And I'm going to do that for every stock that's in my tradable universe simultaneously. Which is how many? Which is over 4,000 stocks. What about 4,500 stocks? This tries to mimic a bit the mean to the middle so that a stock will go back to its original value or to the middle. And it tries to outperform the market with that. And I found it quite interesting to see if it really does. So I was keen to invest a bit of money and see if it works. But instead, I thought maybe I should try it on historical data. In this case, Claude helped me quite a lot to generate the algorithms, to test them and run them. The code is not perfect, but for this kind of work, it just works, right? Let's dive in and see if we can beat the market with this kind of algorithm. So let's take a look. Um, as you can see, I have Claude still open and I'm still editing here and there. And uh, Claude really, really works well when I want to run these algorithms. So first things first, we just download all the tickers. Uh, in my case, I just went and loaded all the S&P 500 tickers from uh, Wikipedia. It just downloads them and extracts them into the tickers. Next step, we just download all of the tickers into CSV files to use them later on and not download them all over again. Uh, I have already done that. So here you can see the historical data. In my case, I have two algorithms, the one that I implemented um, with my idea and the one that is the original one. And the original one is quite interesting, as I said. It tries to sell whenever there's a drop. Uh, it tries to buy whenever there's a drop. So we buy, for example, we have a 5% drop. So we buy for $1,000. Or if there's a 10% rise, we just sell uh, for 1.5K. And um, the rest is pretty straightforward. We just have a stop loss. So whenever we lose too much money, we sell it. And whenever we gain a certain amount of money, we sell it as well, just to take our profit and uh, stop our losses. So the take profit is at 8% and the stop loss is at 4%. So we can edit this a bit. Uh, so for example, let's say we want to have 10% 10, 10 of um, take profit and we want to have a 5% of stop loss then we will just rerun the algorithm and it will run for like 30 seconds um, to get all the results. And uh, we run from 10 years ago. So we will backtrack from the last 10 years, all the stock prices of the S&P 500. So the top 500 stock stocks in the U US market, uh, we will run the strategy on and see if we will gain or lose money over the time. And uh, the most important part, is it better than the just buying the S&P 500 and hold over the last 10 years? Because over the last 10 years, uh, the hold strategy went quite well because the stock market always goes up and beating that is very complex. And many people try to sell you that they can beat the stock market with active managed funds and stuff. But usually they don't beat the market because they have their interest rate and they might be a bit better than the market, but they are... Um, costs that are involved in that usually eat up the um, the more gain they get do. I am not a finance expert. I will not give you any tips. I just see what the data say to me and uh, try different strategies because I mean, everyone wants to beat the market, uh, but it's very hard to do. And here we can see the result of that. We have uh, 10,000 starting capital. And after 10 years, we made uh, 10 the 2000 and loss. And as you can see, we have a total revenue of minus 20%. So his strategy <laughs> went down pretty bad. So it looks like his strategy is not the best strategy to do. Um, we have an annual ro loss of 2%. Uh, I mean, I it's quite possible that it may, I made some mistakes in this uh, algorithm or that Claude made some mit mistakes in the algorithm. So if you have the time and the energy to go through the algorithms, give me give me some tips. I'm happy to see them and um, happy to react on them, right? Uh, but in this case, we did uh, 1,400 trades with a 30% success rate, but in average, we lost 0.2%. Um, but interestingly, whenever you change the values a bit, it has, has a heavy impact on the end result. 
So let me show you my idea. And that was a bit different because I watched the video multiple times and in my head it was like, if the stock rises a few percent, then we expect it to rise further. So let's buy it. And if we, if it goes down, um, a few percent we expect it goes down further so let's sell it so that was my um my idea that i had when i watched the video a few months back and i just remembered it so i was implementing that as well because i thought maybe it's an interesting strategy as an alternative to run we just expect the stock market to rise all the time so let's follow the trend and this is more or less known as the momentum strategy so we try to go with the market but a bit faster than the s p let's run the test so we do the same but we compare it to the s p 500 and interestingly i tweaked the parameters a bit and this made a huge difference so in the initial value i was pretty much at the same rate of the s p 500 but with these tweaks, I was able to outperform the S&P 500 quite significantly. And here you can see we have with this strategy, we can see it also in the scrollable here. Um, where is it? Yes. So we initially had 10,000 and after 10 years, we are at 50,000. So that's like a total revenue of 400% and an average of 16%. So the S&P had an F 11% average. Well, it's pretty similar to other ETFs. We follow the same trend more or less, but when it goes up, we just go faster up, right? And we have also quite significantly drops, right? So there are a few trades that lost quite a lot of money. And if they wouldn't have been done, maybe we would have made more. We have a pretty similar curve, but with more volatility. We made quite a few with losses, but usually not with more than minus a few percent. And that's due to the stop loss, right? So we have a stop loss of 5%, but it can happen that we have significantly bigger losses just because we cannot react fast enough or no one will buy it from us. And here you can also see the take profit is usually shortly above 10%. And that's basically where we also set like take the profit. It can happen that we get more, but it's usually just this curve of like bell curve in this area we just don't trade below five percent minus or ten percent plus that's why we have this big gap and then uh, we can see the most of the trades happen around this stop loss and take profit but yeah we can see we beat the market but this is just due to a few parameter tweaks so let's say we remove uh, we change the parameters back again to um zero point like eight percent and four uh, percent and we maybe want to have a 1k of position size here you can see we change the parameters only a bit and we are below the s p 500 so even like change, tweaking the parameters like slightly can change the outcome a lot but to have a conclusion it's very interesting to test these trading strategies over time and i would love to read your trading strategies down below uh, how you try to outperform the market for me it was very interesting to test especially if you tweak the parameters you can easily outperform the market but only on historical data and there it's very easy to fall into the belief that it is easy to outperform the data uh, the market just because we tweak the parameters basically on the historical data and we know this in machine learning as overfitting so we overfitted our algorithm to the historical data but we have no clue how the data or the market will change in the future these are for sure no finance tips for finance tips you rather watch other youtube channels like finance flows they do very well educational content around investing money in the future i would love to hear your trading strategies just because it's fun to experiment around with that and um yeah it's always fun to think that one can beat the stock market even so i definitely cannot and with that i wish you a great rest of the day don't get fooled and see you next time